So uh, Nick is asking now. So is the experience of shunya is the experience of the self? Yes, it is. The self is nothing but shunyata, emptiness. Uh, you can see it right now also. Uh, the experience of shunya is not really an experience. It is that place from where the experiencing is happening. You can look at it right now also. What is there to experience in the self? And if you can experience it, you can categorize it as an experience, not the experiencer. The self is defined as that which experiences. The self is the experiencer. Keep this in mind always, you see. On the path of knowledge, the success lies in this uh, discrimination. Discriminate between what is experience and what is experiencing it. That which is experiencing is the self. Always discriminate. So when you say experience of shunya, it is an impossibility because shunya, the experiencing happens from shunya. It cannot be, it can convert it into an experience of any kind. It is that which is taking in the experiences. And since it cannot be experienced, it is also called shunya, which means zero, which means emptiness. You cannot call it nothing, isn't it? In nothing cannot experience anything. Although sometimes we say, you know, it is nothing, it is nothing. Uh, it is, but it is best to call it emptiness because that is what it looks like. That is what it feels like. It is empty of all experiences, empty of all feelings, empty of any content. That place which is experiencing in you right now, that place which is aware of all experiences, aware of our feelings, thoughts, mental activity, is even aware of the concept of emptiness. So you will find a concept of emptiness that is in your mind. Like the mind is thinking about emptiness. What is emptiness? Where can I find it? And there is an emptiness that is looking at the mind thinking like this. So it cannot be known intellectually. It's impossible to know the shunya intellectually. It is impossible to experience the shunya. Don't even try. Because, because it will be always the place from where the experiencing happens. And you will find something extraordinary that that which is being experienced is also shunya. You are experiencing yourself. Self with capital S. The emptiness is experiencing itself and these experiences appear as forms. They appear as illusory forms, like flimsy images and sensations and so on. This is what we call as the mind. What are we experiencing? We are experiencing a mind. We are not experiencing a world. You are not experiencing people. This voice is not a voice. Uh, it is just a mind. It is like appearances of various kinds. Uh, even the thoughts that happen, even the emotions that happen, your planning, your desires, your uh, intellectual abilities, the skills and whatever, the impulses uh, and uh, everything that you are experiencing is a mind. What is that mind? You see, you can take a metaphor like uh, uh, the space and the wind and the air if you want. You see, take a space, a room uh, which is empty. And then there is air in it and, and uh, when the air is in motion, it becomes wind. Then it starts uh, producing an experience. Things start waving, changing when the wind blows. If the wind is silent, if the wind is standing there, just stand still, there is no experience. You call it the experience of the space or experience of the shunya. When the movement happens, the wind blows, we call it mind. Is there anything which is separate from uh, the air? Uh, are, are all these things, you know, different from each other? The still air is same as the moving air. Only that the moving air produces an experience. When it is still, you cannot see it. The still air is space. It is, you know, it occupies the whole space. There is no difference between space and air when it is still. That is the stationary mind. That is the no mind still air, you can compare it with no mind. And no mind is my real nature. The mind which is not moving is shunya. That is what, uh, you know, the, the word emptiness points to. A non-moving mind is shunya. But it will not happen. So, uh, it, will, it, it is not going to happen very frequently. 
you will need to pay attention you will need to try to discriminate the wind from the air wind from the space this discrimination is important that which is watching the wind blowing is the self and it is just space it is emptiness the wind is mind it is illusions it is just taking shapes forms vortices and sometimes it becomes a storm <laughs> but who cares it is just wind padanjali says in the yog sutra chitta vritti nirodh is the yog that means uh, when the mind stops you can see the union union of what the experience and the experiencer it happens even if it happens for a second you know that it is true the space between two thoughts where the wind is not moving you see close your eyes and sit and think something and the thought comes and the thought goes and the wind stops wind of the thought stops for a split second between two thoughts if you are paying attention you see dhyan that is what is the meaning of the dhyan practice you will need to sit and see that the mind is different from the space that is experiencing that is what is the essence of the practice of dhyan which is the seventh stage stage of ashtanga yoga the seven, eight st- stages yoga the seventh uh, stage is uh, dhyan which is trying to discriminate between the activity of the mind and the one that is uh, aware of this activity of the mind discriminate and the eighth st- is, uh, step is samadhi that means you incorporate the activity as activity of the space itself the wind is nothing but space in motion air in motion still air in motion that is shunyata so that is why we say the forms that are created that appear you know created is not a good word the forms that appear in our experience are nothing but the experiencer in movement since experience is empty space the empty space moves uh, and the still air moves it does not make it real <laughs> it is just an experience that was still as an as a self uh, and when it starts moving it becomes the experience the same thing that is why we call it non duality advait oneness because it is one thing it is one thing that that is appearing as two things the dwait is happening in that dwait you see the wind is blowing in the space of oneness when it stops it is all one when it uh, is in motion it is still one appearing as two this everybody should be able to discriminate you all you all you need to do is look at your experience right now right now you must be experiencing something like my voice the sound the birds around or anything and that is happening you are seeing the visions you are seeing the objects and people around you and the sensations of the body and thoughts and all uh, this uh, uh, experience is happening on the background on the screen of consciousness which is purely pure emptiness and these are the movements these are mind you see these experiences are nothing but mind mind is nothing but the activity of the mind mind is not a separate object which you can experience on the activity of the mind is all that you can experience you see you can experience only the moving wind not the air and this uh, wind is nothing but uh, the same emptiness that that has taken on a dynamic form appearance right now it is happening in the same way all there is is this dynamic experiencing don't try to still your mind because the still mind is same as the moving mind discriminate simply oh it is moving now it was still now it is moving the space between the thoughts is still then the wind wind of the thoughts and the perceptions uh, and the feelings and emotions it starts impulses desires and then after after a few seconds drops down again calm and then again starts so it is very futile to stop this thing to stop the mind it is the nature of the existence to move we cannot stop it so uh, realize the shunyata in the movement also in the movements of the mind it is shunyata it is shunya only see that it is the mind that is moving there is no experiencer uh, besides this play of stationary mind and moving mind actually the mind is never stationary you will see it only drops down to a level where it becomes imperceptible <laughs> it is it does not even stop after death it won't stop it simply goes beyond the physical uh, range of senses the range of physical senses and then it sprouts back with new activity isn't it 
So this is the, the uh, message of uh, Advait and Buddhism. Both are same. Yes, the experience of Shunya is the experience of self. In rough words, you know, um, in uh, uh, like uh, words of ordinary person, you can say it. But the uh, language of a Gyani is different. Do not call the Shunya as experience. <laughs> it is that which experiences. That is all there is. There is no experience separate from the experiencer. You can see it right now. The mind cannot be observed, you see. And the activity of the mind can be observed. And when you are observing, oh, the mind is silent, then also there is a subtle activity of observing and deducing that, oh, it became silent. You know, there is So it uh, reduces in activity, that is all. I have seen only that. And then re-emerges as activity. If the mind stops completely, like it happens in the state of deep sleep, where also I think, no, it does not stop actually in my experience, but it goes so low, it becomes imperceptible. The, the movement of the wind is so small that nothing blows, nothing moves, nothing waves in the wind. That is the experience of the deep sleep. And that is also the experience of the nirvikalp samadhi, where the mind is not moving at all. But you cannot experience anything then. You see, when you come out of nirvikal samadhi or deep sleep, you recall, oh, there was no experience. And this no experience becomes the experience of the no mind, which is not an experience. If you, if you use strict words, it is no mind, no experience. And no experience is also the experiencer. Something has experienced during no experience or in more accurate words, in strict language, you say that the experiencer remains in latent form during the samadhi state, uh, the nirvikalp samadhi state or the deep sleep state or the states of the causal body like after death states for some time. So uh, nirvikalp samadhi is no mind but that no mind can be known only by the mind. Mind is necessary, the activity of the mind is necessary to know the presence of the experiencer otherwise the experiencer will never know what it is. Now that answers very uh, frequently asked question about why there is an experience. Why, if I am the self, I am the Nirgun Brahman, without qualities, without activities, why I had to take this trouble of creating the experience? And uh, the whole trouble is only so that you know you are you're present. You know it by activity of the mind. It is not there for uh, kind of... Uh, it is not a useless thing. The mind is, <laughs> the mind becomes useless only when it's, it is producing suffering, when it is in ignorance. A mind that is purified by knowledge is a blissful ac thing because it is giving you a experience of yourself. What can be more beautiful and complete than knowing what you are right now, right here? Can there be any other experience that is more beautiful than that? Yes, when it is entangled in stuff that, that the wind of the mind is producing and there is, you know, millions of varieties of these things that it is producing, it is creating the experience for our entertainment, you can say. When it, the mind itself gets tangled in it, which is also called the sansar or the maya, then the suffering arrives. Then it does not know what is happening, you see. Like a child lost in a fair there is activity, there are so many people, thousands of people, so many things are going on. But the child starts crying because cannot see his mother. <laughs> cannot, does not know where his home is. And it becomes, he becomes fearful. The fear takes over. That is the fear of ignorance. The Mahabhai. Oh, I'm lost and uh, I'm, I have nowhere to go. And I don't know what to, what to do now. Nobody is taking care of me. And I need this, I need that. Don't you see, this is the condition of an ordinary person who is not in, on the spiritual path. Lost child in a grand like uh, fanfare of some kind. Lost in the activity of the mind. And that's what we call them as lost in the sansar. They are kind of trapped here. They don't know what to do. And uh, they will remain like that till the guru shows up. Like it happened to me also, you see, it happens to everybody. We are, we are, we are born here. That means we are lost already. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, why will, why are you, why will you choose this physical life? You know, so uh, this is ignorance only. So we are here. That means ignorance is there. 
and uh, it will happen to everybody nothing to worry the guru will show up one day you see and the guru will show you that you were never lost it was just activity of the mind it was a movie playing before you you thought you were lost in the movie look at yourself you are you are the home you are the mother you are the father so you were never lost all you need to do is turn 180 degree you see look at that which is experiencing this drama this madness of the world look at that thing it is you and that is your home that is your mother that is your father no, no there is nothing else except this actually where are you going to get lost you get lost in your home only you, you think that i am lost because probably it is dark it is dark in your there is darkness in your room turn on the light you know light of the awareness and the darkness will be dispelled this will happen when you meet a guru that's what happened to me and many of our people here in the satsang and i i, I always get you know emails and uh, like messages from people that uh, and they they have suddenly woken up to this they have turned on the light in their room and no more lost now now the play of the mind the movie of the mind can uh play play as usual there's nothing wrong in that you see it is perfect even the suffering is perfect even the um, pain is perfect even whatever you call as your troubles and burdens everything is okay because you see it is just a play it is you cannot say it is not real it is real when you are in the play isn't it when you sit back and observe i am in this uh, seat watching the movie then it is it is a play when you are involved in the movie it is real so we do call it as maya we do call it as illusion but illusion is the only reality that you will ever experience you cannot experience any other reality which is more real than this the activity of the mind look at the activity of the mind it is real for all purposes now the only ignorance is if you get trapped in this activity if it starts producing suffering well now you will need to remind yourself that look this is not real that kind of uh, it is the maya and concepts of illusion are like uh, a medicine for the sick if you take it too seriously like get too involved in it like the suffering is too much you know a little bit of suffering cannot be avoided because it is our choice you know what to do if it's too much then uh, and that means the darkness is too much then this medicine is given look everything is unreal and when the mind like kind of heals a little bit and the guru will tell you look there is no other reality except this <laughs> maya is unreal if you are ignorant meditate on this thing